Hello and welcome to UMETSAT. I'm Vesa Nietosvara and I'm a trainer here at UMETSAT. Welcome also to my office where I'm now going to show you some things you can do using the dust RGB. Particularly for dust detection this product is very good uh, because it helps you to immediately see where the atmospheric dust is and uh, it also helps you to monitor its development and its evolution during these events of dust in Europe and in Northern Africa. I would like to introduce you with one example of a dust gaze which helps you to understand why it's quite easy to use this product compared to individual satellite channels like visible or infrared uh, channel images. On my screen you can now see there's a nice weather front over the southeast Europe. You see this big warm front shield, cloudiness over here consists of thick frontal clouds and then you see the cold front going down to the south towards Egypt and of course if you would need to answer the question where is the dust this type of an imagery is not very useful that because it's the dust is hidden it's uh, almost the same color as the clouds or the low clouds but immediately when you switch on the dust RGB product you can see that now we can pick up the dusty areas easily just by following where we see the magenta colors. You see that the dust is being lifted up over the Sahara Desert and then brought into the circulation by the increased winds of the cold front and you see how it extends across the whole Mediterranean and even here over the Greece there are some signs of dust beneath the frontal cloud. You can also see some other features that often we use the dust RGB like the thick frontal clouds so you see they are very ochre or dark brown colors whereas the very thin cirrus clouds are almost black. But this time we only focus on the magenta color which is the dust itself. The fact that we use only thermal channels for creating the dust RGB product makes it possible for us to use it 24 hours a day. That is one strong point for using this product and it makes it easier to monitor it throughout the day and night. I'd like to show you another example now. This time we look at a scene over the western northern Africa as well as western Europe. Let's take a look on how the dust evolves during this circulation. First it begins as a very striking magenta colors over the Sahara and while it circulates around the low pressure center some other colors we can see as well some peach pink colors and these mean that the dust is being lifted off and it's a bit higher elevations. Once the dust moves towards north you can see how sometimes the frontal clouds actually block us from seeing the dust itself but whenever there is even a slight hole in the cloud layer the magenta color beneath becomes visible and that helps us to actually track the movement of the, of the dust. And this is why the animation is very useful when monitoring the dust. This photo here from the Alpine region shows the effects of what happens when the dust settles with rain or snowfall. You can see how the ground turns pinkish brownish because of the dust. Coming back to our second case, it's good to know that dust interacts with the cloud particles and that's one reason why in some other RGB products we may see surprising colors. For example, one example is convection RGB where normally we see yellow colors in connection with strong updrafts. In this case, the dust particles create the same yellow color but it's not a sign of convection or updrafts but it's merely caused by the dust presence. To sum up, use the dust RGB for detecting the dust and aerosols in the atmosphere. Remember that this product is available 24 hours a day because we only use the thermal channels. The colors are quite easy to interpret. Magenta stands for dust. Sometimes when the dust is lifted up higher, you can see also peach and pinkish colors. And that's all you need to actually know. This was the dust episode. Thank you for watching. 
I hope you found it useful.